lots and lots of people have tapped into, well, what they think is some source of um, energy. And the use of energy healing encourages us to put our full trust in ourselves and our own bodies, which some say is a form of worship. And for most who participate in this energy healing, there's uh, no recognition of the one true God. But uh, Jill, it is ragingly popular. As I said, even when I was in the hospital in 2010, somebody came in and wanted to do their, their magic over me. And I just thanked her and said, no, thank you. And she walked away. But Yes, I, I know. I've been there too. All of a sudden, someone starts waving their hands and you're like, uh, excuse me, I need you to stop doing that. And Christians mm-hmm. can be polite too and say, I'm sorry, I don't believe that. And just stop it dead right there. Mm-hmm. It's not as if it's going to cause us any problems because we recognize it for what it is. It's when you get drawn into that methodology. Well, like you say, Jen, the desperation mm-hmm. of wanting to feel better. Anyone who's ever dealt with any chronic illness knows that it wears you down wears you down and you need to protect yourself spiritually and be aware of what's coming at you. This whole crystal thing, I mean, to actually believe that there is an energy inside of certain rocks, like rose quartz, and I think it's black tourmaline. I mean, that's energy that we can draw from to try to heal us, to channel through our chakra points, our chi, our our human energy. This is all related to Hinduism. Crystal healing, as I looked it up, is an alternative medical technique in which crystal and other stones are used to cure ailments, protect against disease. Proponents of this technique believe that crystals act as conduits for healing, allow positive healing energy to flow into the body as negative disease causing energy flows out. And then it continued, but the philosophy of modern crystal healing is based on traditional concepts borrowed from Asian cultures, most notably the Chinese concept of Chinese energy, life energy, chi, and the Hindu or Buddhist concept of chakras. Again, Eric, the thread of ancient Chinese, ancient Hindu, ancient Buddhist type energy, philosophy, spirituality. That is the danger here. Yeah, that stuff continues to, uh, you know, be a, like a, a barking dog that's running up to you all the time trying to get at you. When you begin to investigate these things, if you're not careful, you begin to try to pet the dog and get bitten. Scientifically speaking, according to this uh, science website that I'm looking at right now, it says there's no evidence that crystal healing can be used to cure diseases. And furthermore, no scientific studies have shown us that crystals and gems can be differentiated by a chemical composition. So, you know, oftentimes when we talk about healing, we'll go, well, this defies everything that nature and science talk about when God does something supernatural and heals mm-hmm. someone. Mm-hmm. And the scientists are often, you know, bemoaning and, and poo-pooing God in the process of this, saying, well, that, that couldn't have happened. Well, so how do people get healed through these crystals? How do they find this energy through these crystals? Well, it is the counterfeit of God doing the real thing when he touches an individual. And this is Satan who is empowering these crystals to do what they do that people give testimony to, Mm -hmm. that they found great power from it and healing properties in it. So it is nothing but a counterfeit. And I think that's the thing that every Christian needs to understand and be able to then share with those around them who may have bought into this. I'm going back to this Amazon and the 43,000 things that came up when I typed in New Age Medicine. And the only reason I'm bringing it up again is I saw all of these types of periodicals when I walked into a health food store back in um, 1989. I saw everything on, well, you name it, the Eckhart Tolle, Deepak Chopra, Dr. Oz, New Age Herbalist, periodicals, book, everything, DVDs. My own opinion is a health food store is about the most dangerous place on the planet because it's an industry where, again, the fraud factor is off the chart. In 1989, purchased two bottles of a product in that health food store. Both of them were contaminated as a result of what the Japanese had failed to do in the production of that product, L-tryptophan. About 10,000 Americans died in 1989-1990. I was next, but um, God saved my life. So and I don't know how many have put their faith in some of these products. I think that it's extremely dangerous. Again, all I saw in this store was Chopra and Tolly and Oz and, and everything that I now recognize as life-threatening. I think we have to realize there is no regulation on yeah, any exactly. of these things. Exactly. So you have to be very careful, again, in what you're purchasing, what you're following after, what route you're going down. It's called being diligent. 
and doing your homework and knowing where to go and what to look out for. By the way, I think that there are certainly politicians and uh, people in the culture who are anti-Christian who would also say, well, this idea of Christians praying for healing for others, we uh, maybe we should investigate that. Maybe that should be licensed. That's the kind of stuff that happens when you've got all the charlatans out there and then you've got the real thing next to it. A lot of people, especially the non-Christian, don't know the difference. They always want to follow after anything other than God. Anything that will give them some kind of relief or healing or power, anything other than God. And, you know, I think as we talked off air, Eric, and you said it very well, with this hour, we're not trying to put a guilt trip on people. We're only trying to sound a warning that there could be some spiritual danger ahead by participating. Yeah, exactly. We're not trying to say, well, you know, if you've been involved in any of these things, maybe something we have mentioned or something we haven't and won't mention, but it's along the same lines. This this isn't us saying that you're a spiritual Neanderthal or anything like that. We don't know everything all the time, and, and we grow as we go along. And I look back and recognize things that I once thought was okay, even after I became a Christian. And mm-hmm. I've readjusted that because I, I know the scriptures better, and I'm still on my way. I haven't uh, arrived by any means, but please Please don't take this as us yelling at you and saying, look at you, you made a mistake and how perfect we are here because each of us, uh, last evening as we were talking about the program and, and kind of discussing it, and folks, we put a lot of work in behind the scenes to make this uh, this one hour cook as it does. I said, it's amazing that I can put a sentence together mm, with all the true. psychedelic drugs I once took. And I, I know Jan has some, uh, not the drug experience, but certainly in, in looking for answers for the problem that, that she once had that God healed her of. And we looked at Jill as being the sane and normal one of us. <laughs> oh, boy. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. I, and I think when this is absolutely pushed to the nth degree, we have an experience which Johanna Michelson actually relates. Now, this happened to her, I believe, in the um, early 1980s. I'm going to have her give her short little, it's three-minute testimony here about what happened to her in the 80s. She, I don't know if she was a believer at that time, but she assisted a psychic surgeon. Now, we we can talk about what in the world is psychic surgery, but she's going to kind of explain that as she talks about it here on the John Ankerberg program. And my goodness, the psychic surgeon had a picture of Jesus on an altar, and Johanna thought that the Holy Spirit came and took over this particular psychic surgeon's body to do miraculous things. Johanna was certainly brought into it in an innocent and naive way. Well, now she wrote a wonderful book about it, The Beautiful Side of Evil. When this thing goes to an extreme, things like this can happen. Through these people in mind control, I met a woman in Mexico City who is one of the few genuine, was, she's dead now, a psychic surgeon. And John, she did things that defy description, that most people say, look, Johanna, you had to be hypnotized, you had to be, maybe you're lying. Who knows what ulterior motive you have? You know, one book came out from the Christian perspective implying that anybody who sees this kind of thing is lying or deluded, as another book has recently said. But John, all I can tell you is I had my hands on it. I was with this woman, sometimes from early morning, working through making herbal preparations, grinding up snakes and whatnot, visiting with people who had come for spiritual advice and counsel. And then for the evening sessions, which is when she did the actual operations, I'm the one who set things up. Okay, now this was a lady about how old? Pachita at that time, I don't know. She was in her early, mid-70s. I forget exactly how old Okay, and she would put herself into a trance? She would sit down in front of this altar. Her people... A crucifix on the altar. With the crucifix on the altar, the picture of Jesus. She would sit down, take deep breaths, relax, put herself into her own trance state, and the spirit would come, take over. From that point on, she was no longer referred to as Pachita. It is now Hermanito, little brother. Full masculine traits. male figure. Her eyes were tightly shut. I once watched her thread a needle with her eyes tightly shut I can do with my eyes open and in that state would perform literal physical operations on certain individuals who had been selected uh, over a period of time who were told they had operations that needed to take place the patient for example well let me give you one that took place on a surgeon there was a medical doctor who was there as her assistant after the operations she was st- he would stand back and say I can't believe what I saw it usually takes me hours Full qualified no medical surgeon was down there helping her act an actual medical surgeon he had his own practice in Mexico City at the time but she does Hermanito always had two helpers, a male on one side of the cot and a female for about 14 months, myself, as often as I could get into the city assisting. And I would set up the cotton, the implements that were to be used, primarily a rusty hunting knife and a pair of scissors. The spirit would come and the operations would commence. The patient would come, stretch out on the cot, 
bear whatever section of his anatomy needed the operation. The only uh, concession to antiseptics was a bit of cotton that was rubbed on the section, new cotton from a bottle they brought. And, you know, John, what can I tell you? I did not go buy chicken gizzards at the market across the street. She was not putting little bits of mica underneath her fingernails through which superficial cuts were made. I was not hypnotized. I had my eyes open. I, count I stopped counting when I assisted in over 200 operations. Everything from inoperable brain tumors to lung transplants, which Andre Puharic researched a book on Arigo, another psychic surgeon in, in Brazil, and other uh, th uh, psychic cities research. He said she's probably one of the greatest psychics because he assisted in an operation in which she did an actual transplant. You may be wondering, but you are listening to Understanding the Times Radio. That was uh, Johanna Michelson relating uh, her experience with the psychic surgeon. Jill, help us understand that. Well, the power of the occult is real. Mm -hmm. Satan can imitate. He can counterfeit. And that's what he was doing here. And demon possession is real. That kind of control is real. Happens all the time. Happens today in many places around the world. So yes, I believe that what Johanna saw here and did and participated in was real because there is reality in occult healing, and it's not anything to dismiss. Well, he is the master counterfeiter, mm -hmm. uh, exactly, mm -hmm. and he's not a creator. He's a counterfeiter, exactly what Jill said, and I've said this before on air, and I say it often elsewhere, that he is the second most powerful being in the universe, and I respect that power, yes. but greater is he that lives in us than he that lives in the world, and we don't look to Satan for that power. We don't look to his, you know, his counterfeits. They may be astounding to some people, but we've got to recognize them for what they are, and I encourage Christians to bone up on on this, especially if you have family or friends who have gone down this road.